Let's talk some movies. Movies, movies, movies. So Edge of Tomorrow 2 has just been, uh, I don't know if it's been officially announced. It's, I think people knew it was coming, but we started getting some chatter from the director, uh, and that's Doug Lehman. Uh, he's the director of the first Edge of Tomorrow, which then, if you don't know what I'm talking about with Edge of Tomorrow, it's Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt movie. It was actually pretty good. Came out a couple years ago. Came out under the title. The theatrical release was Edge of Tomorrow. Then when it came out on video, it got retitled Live, Die, Repeat. So oh, I thought that was just like the tagline for it. No, it, it was the tagline. And then they're like, now it's the title. So, okay. Um, yeah. And, but we, we've recently been told that by Doug Lehman, that he had planned this not to be a trilogy. He's going to make a sequel to this movie, but that's about it. That's all he wants to do. He wants to use the sequel. He wants to have two movies. Doesn't feel like going the grand trilogy route. Um, and from the next one, we'll have less action um and more storytelling and they're also going to introduce a third character so that's some of our big things but let's start jumping into things and start breaking down like i said it was edge of tomorrow and then it was lived i repeat but the basic synopsis of the story is the earth is being invaded by aliens these aliens somehow always win every single battle no matter what uh and the humans are trying are desperately trying to figure things out so they launch this all-out attack this suicide attack almost on the aliens and something happens to tom cruise and he keeps reliving the same day over and over and over and he finds out that that's actually how the aliens win everything is they have the about the ability to reset the clock by about 24 hours and so anything that happens to him they can let it play out for 24 hours see what the plans are then reset the clock and accurately and and so, or pretty pretty adeptly uh so they utilize a groundhog's day power for yes. domination yes. purposes yes they watch them in fact that was the plot twist so spoiler alert um the aliens got the idea from watching groundhog's day and they said well that's how we'll take over the earth we'll just repeat the same day over and over so i, I mean I'm, it's probably pretty effective if you do it on such a massive scale mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> a massive worldwide invasion I mean, scale so yeah mm -hmm. i i think in, in theory if bill bill murray had decided yeah let's let me try to take over the world rather than just be a perfect person in one day. Maybe it would have worked eventually if he has forever to, to figure it out how to do it as one guy. <laughs> but that'd uh, be pretty, yeah, pretty, uh, I'm sure he could figure it out. He did learn how to play the piano, knew how to save that kid. I mean, all those great things he did. Um, but th so what I really wanted to talk about, not is so much the movie itself, but the idea behind what they're doing with the sequel. And I really, really like this idea. So here's a quote from um, uh, Lehman. And it, it's, I think what people tend to do with sequels is they just make them bigger. And I'm like, no, a sequel should be smaller. You did the first film as sort of a ad campaign for the sequel. So now you don't need as much action and in the case of edge of tomorrow people obviously love the comedy and they love the situation dot 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 so we can do a w do way with more focus on tom's character and emily blunt's character and there's a third character in the sequel that's going to sure steal the show the movie sorry we can focus on that and i don't need an action sequence every two minutes i and that's am concerned about that really because i read that and i say okay so they've already got all the exposition out of the way they have already got uh, they've set up a, a a groundwork for all these things and so now it's more time to focus on the characters that you have developed and that's kind of what it seems like he's doing here because you see so often in movies in my opinion at least you have one movie that comes out and they try to set up all the characters with the first movie and they kind of do that smaller and they build and get bigger and bigger and bigger which works for a lot of movies don't get me wrong like lord of the rings trilogy that got bigger and bigger in scale as it went through um and, and it, it was amazing because it, it built on the action. But so often we have these movies that shouldn't be trilogies, that shouldn't be, you know, multiple sets. Uh, and they just, okay, the first one was big and in your face and explosive. So, hey, let's just double that in the second one and you get a horrible movie. Let's, let's, just, let's just reach back not too far in the past and give you an example of said movies like that. The Expendables. First movie, not, not a not a great movie, but a good movie. I enjoyed the first Expendables movie. Absolutely hated the second because they're like, hey, we just do the first. Let's just do the same thing, but double the size. And then in the third, oh, let's just do bigger. And then in the fourth, let's just do bigger. And everyone got progressively worse and worse and worse because they're trying to outdo the first movie instead of complement the first movie. And I kind of hear that from hearing what uh, Lehman has said. 
I kind of think that that's the direction he's trying to go. He's trying to complement the first movie without trying to outdo the first movie. And I think that's a better path for a sequel. I, okay. Well, we're going to put it thoughts. this way. Artistically, this might be a good route. Otherwise, I think it's a bad route because he's right. People think that they need to go bigger and bigger and bigger because that's what audience are is expecting when you and, see and, something you say how how are they going to top this in the next movie because that's what mm-hmm. people want to see they already saw this level in the next one they do want to see bigger or higher stakes or something more of they want to see not just repeats of what they saw before they do in fact want to see more of what they saw before that drew them in and now it sounds like he's even taking away a lot of the action which it seems like if your audience is there partially because of the action, unless the audi- unless the action was like not important to anyone, um, but if your audience is there because of the action, action the they one. need to keep it. Yeah. Now, but again, with this, I I do like the idea because it doesn't have to go that way every movie. Because you're right, there is a lot of that. Like, I want to see more of what we had. But let's think of another movie that did this. Three hundred, the first three hundred movie, spectacular. It was really unique the way that it was filmed and the action sequences were done. And then it seemed like the second movie, they're just like, okay, let's just take the exact same ideas and make them bigger. And we're going to give you the exact same thing, pretty much. But it just felt like it was watered down. It, like even yeah. though the action sequences were there, it just felt like the plot. They were just like, hey, we can do the same thing. Let's just make it a little bit crazier. And it just didn't feel like it worked, you know, and I was really disappointed with the second 300. Another movie I could say right now off the top of my head is Sin City. I love the first Sin City. It just, everything flowed. So it's one of my favorite movies of all time. It's just everything flowed. And then the second one, they're like, okay, we're going to do it, but we're going to do, you know, pretty much the same thing and try to do it a little bigger. And it just fell flat. So I, I, I appreciate trying to tell more of a story with the sequel rather than just try to get more people <laughs> To say, hey, you watch the first one, you better come and watch the second one because if you don't, um, you'll miss out. I, I, I don't really care about missing out on those things. I, I'd rather be, you know, fulfilled by something rather than, you know. I, I do like uh, that both of your examples are from comic books. And I think, aren't those both Frank Miller comics? Um, yeah, yeah. They're, they're based fact, off yeah. of. And, and those are both uh, sets of movies where both sets of stories were, I think, already made by the time the first one was made. So it wasn't really, it was just, that's what the second parts were. Um, so not much they could really do about that. But, I, but I, I do think you're right that a lot of sequels do terribly. They don't hit the mark. You're right. Because they, and, just and try because to they are trying the to do, because they are trying to do bigger, because it's so much harder. So it's it's so difficult to do bigger, and also because sometimes the uh, the production team identifies the wrong thing that audience liked to do bigger. They'll do something bigger without and, and leave out the rest, or they'll think that everyone really liked the action, but really what people liked was the story, or they think that everyone liked the crazy story, so they'll make the story crazier and forget that that wasn't actually what people were going for. There's difficulty in identifying what it is that you need to make bigger and doing it well. And a lot of sequels do fail uh, to do it well. But that's still what people want. Like a successful sequel is one that is able to figure out how to do things bigger and do it the way that people will still enjoy. I think it's typically how it goes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, I can give you other examples of where they have done it right and went bigger and still did better. Uh, The Star Wars franchise, A New Hope was great. And then uh, Empire Strikes Back went bigger. It went better. Kind of. It was better. Empire Strikes Back went smaller. Really? With the Battle of Hoth, that was a huge scene there. They had so many more sets. Yeah, but as opposed to the the Death Star, like the um, Mm -hmm. scene at the end, right? It it builds up to something bigger with the destruction of the Empire in the second, in the third movie. Um, and it's char- the plot gets much uh, more important and gets darker and gets is a bigger um, set okay, of surprises. Okay, well then, then, then you changed my mind. This is an example of how it could go better if you yes yeah. smaller. In fact, the size this entire time that I was arguing against, I was like, well, Brian could always bring up Star Wars. 
well, that did the opposite of what I'm saying. But, there you go. but it is a so, rare instance, I think. So yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I just I, I like to see them trying new things. Almost, it's not we're going to copy off of every other movie franchise that has had any success and decided to do a sequel. Um, we're going to just do it the way my artistic their artistic vision is put forth, and I think that's a way to get better movies. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, so, although I will say that with the Star Wars example what made the um the empire strikes back able to go that route of more intense on story but smaller on scale of things in the way that i see it is that they were setting up a third movie they were truly well, yeah. he's yeah. already said it and this Marvel's one's not. not this one this one is not set, so. setting up a third so it's gonna be interesting but hit us up let us know are you excited in this new direction that uh, or not new direction in the direction that edge of tomorrow 2 is taking or would you rather them go bigger and more grandiose and and build on what they have uh so hit us up let us know comments down below of course at what's my face on twitter google plus and facebook oh is good ways getting all of us but let's keep on rolling